<laughs> Let's see if I can't improv this. Last time I made a drawing, I purposely skipped the shoes. I purposefully skipped the shoes. This time I'm going to cover the shoe cover the shoes alone. And of course, I'm going to do this in a way that allows people using pen and paper to follow along. For this purpose, just like the car, <clears throat> I'm going to choose a diagonal angle. Diagonal angle. I previously mentioned that Making shoes is part making a circle and part making a cylinder. Let's see if we can make that process a little easier <clears throat> by doing the same way we made the car. We are going to draw the outside first and work our way inward. I said diagonal, so it's going to be diagonal. Things are going to start intersecting. That's okay, we can erase later. Okay, now let's start racing. Wait. I cannot draw a straight line to save my life. Okay, now let's start racing. Is that a Pi Mini shortcut? Let's find out right now.
There isn't. There isn't. No, there isn't. We need to soften the edges here, or at least round them. That edge is fine. This isn't. Now, is there anything else you want to add before we reiterate this? because the special effects usually tend to come last. But if we add in some of those effects, like the soul and the laces, we can make our lives easier when we trace over this later. But there's the problem. Where are they? Where are those where are those features? Do I have any references for this? Mm hmm. That one.
And of course, time to smooth it. The one thing you can't do on paper. Okay, I'm going to put the Q I'm going to put the damn. I'm going to put the Q and A right here because there's only one real thing I have to answer. That reference photo right there. Why did I need that to draw a shoe? Well, in the middle of drawing the shoe or half shoe half boot, which Give or take might have some non-Euclidean geometry, as in non-manifold or anything. I realized that in an attempt to draw laces, I've never drawn that before. So, I didn't have a good reference to go by. Thankfully, I remembered running into this specific photo through a specific web search. However, this recording came in two parts, as you might have noticed. There was a sharp video cut. That is because in an attempt to import this image into Blender, I found, it's, I found out its extension was .avif. I tried to throw it into GIMP, and it wouldn't read it. So I assumed this was because the guys on the site didn't want anyone taking this photograph, didn't want anyone taking this picture, but what they didn't realize was that screen shooting exists, which is exactly what I did to solve this problem. I really wish I had thought of that sooner, but Kim was the first thing I came up with, so I tried that. It didn't quite work out the way I wanted it to. Now, you can take this information and draw a shoe in whatever angle you like. There's another reference that tells you how to draw shoes from the bottom. I'm not going to go over that. I did in fact say Drawing the shoe will be very much like drawing a car in that we start from the outside first. But unlike the car, we didn't have windows to work with to tell us what the outer shape would be. The result is, this improv of mine involved a lot more improv than I was prepared for. But I hope this works. And rest assured, next time, there will be animation involved. Two topics left before I cover animation. Eyes and hair. This time around, it's eyes. This time, I had to dig around a little for information on how to draw eyes in two different ways. Realistic and the style everyone looks for. What else? Okay, let's try this again.
as my guest for one of these processes i'm going to be taking images from this site and dragging them straight into blender but that has to wait I do not have the steadiest hands on Earth. I don't. And you think I'd use a stabilize feature for this purpose, or delay stroke. But then, how are people drawing with pen and paper going to follow along? And so, current course, current course of events, I have to try. No, it's not going to work. I'm just going to have to try. Just zoom in at this point. Yeah, I should have done that before. <clears throat> and now the trades were the parts that matter 
Wait. Let's first erase what we don't want. Hmm, that appears to be it. Okay, let's trace again. Trace over. Which, in some parts, is a simple feat. I say as I proceed to mess it up somehow. In some cases, I'm not doing exact traces. I, I just want my iterations to be something I can work with. That when I cheat by using the smooth brush on it, because no one pen and paper can follow that, it would at least look a little better when it's all said and done. So, for those of you falling on pen and paper, I have to apologize in advance, because the alternatives just erase spam, and then I would have all these edges lying around as I continue to erase again and again, and have to reiterate that. No one needs that. On pen and paper, understandably, it's unavoidable. But... But on... But on a computer, there are things I can get away with which I'm going to. It, it just makes the process a little more appealing. Call it the Hollywood effect. You want to convince people to do what you say or buy your product? You're going to take the time to make it look as good as possible. You're going to find ways to make it appealing.
for those of you drawing on pen and paper, trying very hard to follow along, maybe feeling miserably, it's probably because you might have noticed strokes are a little wide. You might have noticed I'm overlooking that detail. But for the purpose of those on a computer, we have a we have a feature called equalize strokes. Normal normalize normalize thickness, I should say. Oops. Misremember that name completely wrong. So for those of you following on pen and paper, ignore the thickness of the strokes here. And in repeat iterations, try to draw things in as few strokes as possible. This would require a very steady hand. And that's that's asking a lot, especially from those who don't know what they're doing. All you have to do is try. You're going to fail miserably. You might fail miserably. You might get in one shot. I don't know that. It's okay to take your time. It's okay to trace your own drawings. It's okay to draw tracing paper in order to trace over your own drawings. Or anyone else's if you need a good reference. It's okay to cheat as much as possible because in order to become a professional, you need to at least pretend to be one. That requires a little bit of sleaziness, I should say. A little bit of evil. Something I dislike to a large degree. It's okay to do things that would otherwise seem wrong or moral to others when it comes to artwork, because everybody has to start somewhere. Somewhere on this earth. I haven't said very much in making these tutorials because the references are basically doing it for me.
it might not be perfect the first time. It might not be perfect the tenth time. It might not be perfect the thousandth. I'll be honest, at that point, you may want to reassess what hobbies you're trying to get into. Back on point, all that matters is that you keep trying as long as each of those iterations or attempts are at least slightly different in some way. That way, you're not doing the same thing over and over again in an attempt to get different results. Okay, okay, I suppose it's time to do it the way everyone in their grandmothers really loves. Yep, it's that time. Do I have a step-by-step -step set of instructions for this? Because the sign I'm getting this from doesn't give me very much. Mm hmm. We do, in fact. Let's use it. Males go first, females right after. The choice is preferential. There is no bias involved, so don't go there. Let's get started. What do you know? Drawing large strokes is beginning to bite me in the rear very, very hard.
So this next iteration is going to be on thinner strokes. Not an exact match, but I hope it works. And now, for the female, as promised, we're just going to take a little more time. So, for those of you with pen and paper, how do I expect you to follow along? What, what should I expect you to do when going from larger strokes to smaller strokes? The simple answer is, take a pencil and run down the edge. That is, don't make it sharp, make it dull, but also make the edge just a little flat. That way, when you draw it on paper, you get larger strokes. Then take another pencil, sharpen it, and if you're tracing over it, 
follow along the inside of the lines to the best of your ability. If you're sticking with a single stroke size, which in this case I hope would be a thin stroke size, then in your iterations that you trace over, you may want to erase the lines that don't matter. Remember to erase lines that don't matter. Erase lines you do not want. Look at the drawing here. In this example, an arc is drawn through a circle here, but it is gone in the next image. It is erased. That would count as a line that doesn't matter. It's there for reference, but at a later point, you can get rid of it. You can do this with pinpoint accuracy if you have a plastic eraser. You're going to have a tougher time if you use a regular eraser, but if you can't access anything else, at that point, it can't really help you. There is only so far I can go with my suggestions here. Watch, I'm going to draw the arc too. Then I'm going to erase it. That large circle, that smaller circle right there, we're going to draw that. Same process, we erase the inner part. Same thing again, right here. Cheating by zooming in. And now, since the rest is coloring, we're going to trace over this with a thinner stroke. In as few strokes as possible.
I ignored it because, as you just noticed, I was drawing a straight line instead of an arc. You do not want arcs in this in this case. We need curves. The rest is coloring, so I have to stop there. <laughs> to left, specifically the side views. At this point, the higher one's the idea, the lower one's the reference we're going to use. Why? It's a little tough for me to try it in one shot right now instead of with a step-by-step -step reference. So 
that's what I'm going to use. Well, and now I think about it, that would be a little more fair to those with pen and paper. The eyebrows, I'm going to skip. This is going to be gruesome. Hey, that's right, I forgot something. Not bad. Not the best, but again, not bad. Could be worse. And now, for this style, that everyone likes. And I'm going to keep saying it like that because despite going over it, in the future I will not try too hard to use it. So in my channel just enjoy all you can. Unless, of course, someone insists on asking otherwise. Minus the eyebrow, let's do it.
Holy crap, it's actually beginning to hurt now. So in the future, I need to, if I'm going to draw with large strokes, I need to draw just a little thinner for cases like this. It's unavoidable. It's completely unavoidable. Today I learned, had learned somehow, And boy, what did I learn? Okay. Let's start tracing in as few strokes as possible. Not an exact match, but we're trying here. Boy, oh boy, all you guys on pen and paper must be frustrated that I'm messing this up so much and then just relying on sculpt mode to smooth out the results. What a cheater I am. I suppose that means somewhere along the way, I'm going to have to try all of these on paper. To which, not all, but it will happen. Just to satisfy, just to satisfy each and every one of you. You know, now we think about it, there's clearly is something I need to address right now. As you may have just noticed, I can definitely see what I'm doing when it comes to tracing and in this case, and therefore you reiterating the larger strokes with smaller strokes. But again, what if I were on pen and paper? How would I go about this? The only real thing I could suggest, and you're going to hate this, well, there are two things. The first is to draw unconfident lines, which I will go over at a later point. Unconfident lines, confident lines are single stroke lines. You don't care how garbage they are, you're drawing the single stroke. Unconfident lines are the equivalent of what I like to call hair strokes or chicken scratches that you would later use those rough sketches those rough sketch lines to draw a single line slowly and carefully please to get the result you're looking for the second method would be to draw alongside those iterations that you could use one iteration as reference for another to draw a little better, but that's tougher to do when things might get better or worse, it's basically the flip of a coin. So I wouldn't suggest that second one. Now, I do still have here to go over before I go into animation. And again, as promised, some of this will happen on paper just when 
I have a lot of time to do it. With that, please excuse me. Hair styles are the only thing left. Hair is the only thing we have left to cover before we start animating. For this purpose, I had previously cheat drawn a circle. I can't talk to quietly or this won't work. So, take two. There are multiple ways of drawing hairstyles. The first comes from an excerpt from Anime Outline, which explains there is front hair, side hair, and back hair. There are two versions of hair. There are two groups of hair. Male hairstyles and female hairstyles. For this purpose, we're going to use both methods in both types of hairstyles. Male first. The rest of this will not be cheat drawn. Right here, here. That's the back here. And that's side hair. Okay, female first because male hairstyles are a little different. She drawing the circle for this. That's the back. For males, well, gee, in either case here, to get hair going, it depends on the hairstyle you're going for. One method is to draw lines inside of these blocks.
So as you can see, I'm just going for a bowl cut. Well, it looks like a bowl cut from here, but I can also give these sharp edges. I'll explain that a little later. Or actually, I can just explain it right now. The edge here does not have to be the limit. You can go beyond this and draw sharp edges. But then we need to focus on the back hair. Males can get back hair. It can get messy. So another way to do this is to draw curved lines in the back where hair would grow. It's okay to go outside the bound. It's okay to go outside the boundary lines. It's very okay, in fact. All you have to do is follow them along. Let me try it again. All you have to do is follow them so it doesn't look too messy at the end. And at least keep it consistent. Okay, so we have the back here going, but we need to finish the front. And to keep it consistent, we're going to use the same type. Try, Jesus, use the same type of strokes we used for the back ends for the front ends. Only this time, we're going to start over here. Yeah, it's getting messy over there. I'm going to have to race some lines on the way out. In fact, let's get on that right now.
So that's where you reiterate. And we can do it minus the lines up here. Or we could just shorten them actually. But what about the female hairstyle? Such hair tends to be a little longer. Especially on the sides here. And remember, the sides do not have to be boundaries. So guess what's going to happen? You may have noticed I'm drawing these lines awfully straight. In future iterations, we can give them a sort of wavy feel, but that's another hair that's another way of drawing hair I like to go over entirely on its own. What I'm doing right now is very tiring. Which is why I want to share a second method of getting things done, which you might recall after seeing how it works, but it's a little less painful than what you're seeing here. It's a method I'm going to use. What method in specific? Lines. You may remember that from how I drew my own hairstyle, something you don't see everywhere. It can very much be used to draw male and female hairstyles with a little more ease and speed. We're going to take the same method we used before, with a little bit of a change. The front ears go first for this purpose.
before I continue, I just need to point out there are dozens of ways of drawing here from what I could what I could imagine. I'm just using ones that work best for me. If you find something that works best for you, by all means. If the strand is too long, then you could just thin your stroke as you go along. This might require a little bit of a trial and error erasing as you go along to figure out how you want it to work. As you can see here, I had to draw it half as long in order to get the result I was looking for. But remember, if you're using this method, you're going to want to erase the middle line as you go along for each strand of hair so you don't have a mess to look at. Something I just thought of, you can also go backwards and start from the end and go up. It's a little less trial and error, but it requires a good guess as to where the hair is going to go. And a steady hand so it doesn't screw you over on the way up later. Again, this could also work for back hairs. As you can see, I didn't even iterate it yet, and look at how it looks already. But what about the top here? I never explained that last time, aside from the bowl cut method. Well, again, the only thing you can do is throw in some lines here and there. And what about the top? What if the top has strokes? Well, same thing.
the hair strokes here at the top of the hair do not have to connect to one another like they do at the bottom here. In fact, you can even throw in random hair strokes with this hairstyle in any direction you want along the top of the head. is very much like drawing a leaf, except you're moving the middle stem, resulting in a hair strand. This also works for female hairstyles. The same thing applies. Only the length would be much longer. The question is, what about groups of hair? Let's suppose, for instance, we drew a single strand just like this. But then, what about strands that act as groups? There are two ways to do this. The first is to draw a line somewhere along the line that tells the hair is split there. Maybe here. Maybe like this. But, if instead of the outside, if instead of in front, rather from behind, we can draw that too. Let's try in front first so I can do this properly, just to get out of my system. Yeah, there sounds fine. and then from behind. works both ways. It's like drawing thorns, only in the future you may want to draw them thinner. Continuation, because surroundings, any kind of hairstyle works with this. Any kind. Even drills.
Let's try it right now. That's how hurdles when you draw a corkscrew. Who would have guessed? Now let's follow along the lines. Now let's focus on the leading the middle line. All of you on pen and paper are going to find this to be of utmost frustration. It isn't the best, but I hope you get the idea. Any hairstyle you can think of, you can draw with this method. It's either in the first method I mentioned. Any hairstyle in any way, and you can use this to animate too. Any hairstyle. Animation is going to be its own video of course but it's going to be a long one because i have to go back and review all of those topics while attempting to animate everything hair will be dead last hair in hand but i will have you know that when it comes to objects, with the multiple methods of drawing objects I have displayed so far, getting an animation going, even in Blender, should be a snap. Even more so if they would add the features we all want. So while I will animate in Blender, and maybe even add in some color fills, I don't think I'm going to finish in Blender, instead a different software. That is how bad these problems are. That is the showstopper that some of these problems prove. They make things a pain. The way they want you to do things... It's like you're thinking very linearly. But I'm getting ahead of myself right now. See you around. I did in fact remember one more thing I needed to do before I actually stop and focus on animation, which would be a later point. For this purpose, yet again, I'm drawing 
a block shaped around the head. But this time, I'm drawing lines rather sporadically. Here, it looks like a bowl cut. But what if you wanted to split it apart as it went along? Now it's wacky hair, but we can go in further with this by choosing an angle and just doing this. For the same purpose, if you have a really large clump of hair somewhere and you want to branch off from it, you can. The only reason I thought about this was seeing someone's profile picture, I won't say who, because it won't be safe for me, but the whole reason I forgot about this was because I was focusing on drawing things through lines, a method I have coveted and basically swear by at this point. You don't know how long I've waited to explain this. To explain the idea of how to animate in, in clearly less than complete software, there are multiple ways to animate. I'm going to talk about the first one right now, but not show it off because it's early pointless. As I previously explained, there's a problem with the inflation tool. As someone on Blitter's Stack Exchange asked, to, to further elaborate, whenever they rotate objects, the object shrinks. They do it through edit mode. In edit mode, they keyframe one state, go at least a few frames further, and rotate again. Then they interpolate the sequence. The problem is, the interpolation is not circular, it's straight. Every stroke is made up of a number of lines. As the answer to that black, that Blender Stack Exchange post explains those points move in a straight line no matter what. When you interpolate, they move in a straight line. So when you rotate an object by 90 or 180 degrees, it will shrink the object. Please pardon the throat problems. This is the first time I've spoken a bunch all day. So clearly at this point, Blender only wants us to do things one specific way because
the SVG tool has a few problems. Not inf not implemented? I, I'm having a tough time believing that at this point, Blender. Guys, this has been a thing since 2019. The SVG tool has been a thing since around 2020. What do you mean not implemented? Not implemented after around three years. Almost four years since the new Grease Pencil tool became a thing. A little earlier if you count the beta. So there are plenty of things I can do with this, but Animate isn't one of them. Case in point, incomplete tool, and that is why I insist on doing things halfway in Blender and finishing in other software. That's clearly the direction they want us to go with this. Unfortunately, Blender wants us to animate things in a traditional manner, despite the fact that they, as I just displayed, gave us tools to animate things like it's Flash. You gotta wonder what the thought process around this was. Why would they force us to do things one way, even though they gave us tools to do it almost any other? When it comes to 3D, Creative freedom is there in Blender, but when it comes to 2D, the story is a little different. I'm not going to get too complicated about this. That's a story for another day. Instead, I'm just going to be as civil about this as possible. For those of you shaking your fists at me with a pen and paper, the only part of this you can't copy is the sculpt mode thing. Everything else is very possible on pen and paper, only I would suggest using software because otherwise you're going to be using a bunch of paper for this. As you saw, the first method involved editing strokes in edit mode, where would automatically put a keyframe here because automatic keyframing is turned on. But we can do this a little differently. Warrant free in 10. And now things have changed. I have this low to give myself more control over things. But we can give it some in-betweens. The first way to do this is with interpolation. Um, not the kind I just showed off. Right audio should do. This is the shortcut, so I'm going to use it.
But this also has a problem, as you can see. Again, they want us to do things very, very linearly, traditionally. That's not going to work. This is the best way to animate in Blender because it is very clearly the only way they want you to animate in Blender. You can animate just about anything this way in Grease Pencil in Blender this way. As again, it is the only thing they want. And that is a problem I'm having here. There are so many things they didn't implement, which people have been crying about. It's not just me. Yet, here we are. <sighs> now, the intent is to explain advanced animation at some point. But there's one more thing we have to cover. Storyboarding. We don't need Storyboard 2 for this. It's there, but we don't need it. I will get into it, but again, it's not entirely necessary. In fact, I'll look into it right now. I'll just stop this recording and look into it right now. If at all, it would help later on. So, here's the plan. Things I will do in Blender are animate and add colors, but special effects have to go into a different software. That's just how they want it to be. One video cut later, I did in fact the a storybook add-on. It's called Story Pencil. I forgot its name. I read through it. And, as far as I'm personally concerned, it's just a fancy pants way of storyboarding. So, why will the idea of storyboarding, for me, is, is as simple as making a comic book strip, or a comic book panel of some kind, a bunch of comic panels. I'm going to wait to focus on that, and just go into the part where we actually animate something. It's not going to be the best animation on Earth. It's going to be... It's not going to be the best. It's going to be something. And I'll, and I'll tell you what, I will take the time to record myself working on more advanced animations and then voicing over those tutorials, those videos as tutorials, because to, to do this, to do that much improv, to, that, to do that much as improv is, 
is a terrible idea from what I'm looking ahead into. So I'm going to make this as simple as possible. It's not going to be a biped, it's not going to be a car. Those will come as recordings I voice over. I'm not going to do it live, I'm not going to improv it, no. This is going to be simple. A flag. Or more specifically, the pennant part of a flag. Screw it, we're just going to go a plain old box. And then I say screw it and do a pin it anyway because I can. That's right. That's like other drink for. There's a few effects for this, but as my guest, I'm basically boycotting them at this point until Blender fixes the problem where it needs to be isolated to specific layers. Until that point, I'm not going to bother using them. This affects the entire object. Flags animate in the wind by flailing around. That's what we're going to do. Thank you, Onion Skinning, for existing.
I haven't even cleaned it up yet. And it looks like an animation to me. I would just duplicate these keyframes, but there is another way out of this, which... requires... might require VFX. Unless I can set this as cyclical. Let's see. Can I set these as cyclical? This is what I want on all the grease pencil effects. Layer isolation, that's all I want. Okay. That what space is for is how an animation and how traditional animation overall works. Blender being as mean as it is about it, this is how it would work. Now again, it's going to stop right here. I'm going to have to take a process into this. I'm going to have to Make comic strips about this, about what I want to animate. Treat those as storyboards. Animate each comic panel, and string it all together. Where it's my own frustration, it's going to end in different software. Because Blender, the devs do not do not seem to care all that much about two D as opposed to three D. 
which again raises the question as to why they gave it to us in the first place. I mean, thank you, but could you please improve your tool? You think I'd do it for you if I knew how to code? I'm not a coder, I'm a graphic designer. That's a story for another day. This recording stops here.